Taliota chance. Now let's have a shootout between Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 3. Is there any difference? Well, I've already done a video on the differences between the two, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But to sum up, yeah, there's not that much difference. It's the same amount of bandwidth. There are things like you can wake up your computer from external Thunderbolt devices now that is like built into Thunderbolt 4. There is some Intel DMA protection built in security feature so it's on by default in Thunderbolt 4 and you cannot have the two lane Thunderbolt 4s so you have to have the 15 watt versions with the full 40 gigabits per second. They're both 40 gigabits per second, maximum or 32 gigabits per second, because there is bandwidth reserved for display lanes, overheads, etc. So there's no extra speed from Thunderbolt 4, but it's a bit more complicated than that. I have two laptops here. We have the XPS 13 2 1, 11th generation Intel Thunderbolt 4, and we have the Razor Blade Advanced, so 10.8750H, so 8 core CPU, 45 watts, and Thunderbolt 3. Now the 11th generation CPU is a 15 watt part, 4 cores, so it's 4 cores versus 8, 15 watts versus 45 watts. Of course, the Razer is the more powerful one, but the Razer has Thunderbolt 3. The XPS 13 has Thunderbolt 4, but the reality is most laptops that have Thunderbolt 3 will have discrete Thunderbolt 3 controllers. Now, this is not required for Thunderbolt 4 or even Ice Lake CPUs as well. We'll just talk about Thunderbolt 4 or 11th generation. That's because Thunderbolt is built into the CPU, so you don't need the discrete Thunderbolt 3 controller. So this means Thunderbolt 4 is going to have a lot less latency than and Thunderbolt 3. Even though it's the same amount of bandwidth, it will have much lower latency. There's also one neat feature about Thunderbolt 4 devices, that is, you can put a Thunderbolt on either side of the laptop. Now with this Razer, you'll see it's got two USB-Cs, or one of them is actually a Thunderbolt, that's the one on the right. The other one is just normal USB-C. And the reason they're both not Thunderbolt is because you would need two discrete Thunderbolt controllers if you wanted one on each side. With Ice Lake and Tiger Lake CPUs 11th Gen on Thunderbolt 4, you don't have to worry about that, because they don't have discrete Thunderbolt controllers, they're built in to the CPU so you could put the Thunderbolt on either side and this XPS 13 they've done the right thing right they put one Thunderbolt on each side that's how you want it if the Razer wanted to do that they would have to put two Thunderbolt 3 controllers in one for each side now the only laptop that does that is the Mac so the Mac has four Thunderbolt 3s and two discrete Thunderbolt 3 controllers one either side so it can put the Thunderbolts on either side so anyway let's see if there is a difference and as I said before I did test a nice like Thunderbolt 3 versus this Thunderbolt 4 in the XPS yeah no difference virtually margin of error here but people want to know can I get an ultrabook and an eGPU will it perform as good as like a gaming laptop well let's find out of course eGPU on both the graphics card I'm using is actually the dual RTX 3070 made by Asus. It's one of the best RTX 3070s you're going to get, especially at the lower mid-range sort of section, because this has dual BIOS, it has two HDMI 2.1s, it's cool, it's quiet, and it's not expensive compared to the higher end models. So this is the way to go if you want an RTX 3070. If you want the best one, just get the Strix one, but this is a good entry level one, and really, they perform all the same anyway. But what you want is cool, quiet, and the features. So that's used on both of these laptops here. So on the left we have the XPS 13 2 and 1 on the right we have the Razer and what you need to look at is the graphics score forget about the overall score because that's to do with the CPU if we have a look at the graphics score okay the Razer 19,000 that is actually less than the 2080 that's in it so if I was to use the 2080 that's in that the 2080 Super that the Razer Advance is equipped with, it's going to be faster than this eGPU, the RTX 3070. But have a look at the XPS 2 in 1. 25,000. That is faster than the RTX 2080 Super Max Q that is in the Razer. It's a massive difference. I cannot believe how much of a difference that is. The same amount of bandwidth. What is this down to? I think it's because anything that's equipped with Thunderbolt 4 is going to have low power DDR4X. So it's going to have RAM that's like 4000 megahertz. Plus not having to go through a Thunderbolt controller and being directly connected to the CPU, we're getting better latency. And you've got to remember, it's 4 cores versus 8 cores, 45 watts versus 15 watts. This blew me away. I had no idea this 
this was possible. And when I tested Thunderbolt 3 in a normal Ultrabook with Isolate CPU, the difference wasn't like this, right? So that just blew me away. So let's get into another one. All right, so let's have a look at some gaming benchmarks then. Will this trend continue? And these gaming benchmarks are done at 1440p because I wanted to do something in between 1080 and 4K because I didn't want to push everything to the GPU and I did want to have some sort of CPU bottleneck, but not as much as 1080. So in the middle, 1440p, why not? Anyway, DSX Mankind divided 4040p high eGPU RTX 3070. And what we can see here is more of the XPS 13 again is on top. Now this is strange because it's got a much sort of weaker CPU in terms of gaming. I'll, I'll give you an idea of the differences between the CPU. Of course, four cores versus eight, 15 watts versus 45 watts. When you game on the XPS 13 2 and one up to four cores with the frequency of around three gigahertz to 3.5, mostly around the three gigahertz mark. Now with the Razer Blade Advance, you get up to eight cores of up to four gigahertz or a little bit over four gigahertz, but mostly in between 3.8 and four gigahertz. So basically there's nearly a gigahertz between the CPUs and has also doubled the amount of cores on the Razer. So for me, this is very interesting to see that with the XPS 13 Toolmon, with the same eGPU, same RTX 3070, it beats out the Razer Blade with Thunderbolt 3. Now have a look at the second bar, which is the green one. That is 1% lows. Now I did expect this. I did expect with less latency, not having to go through a Thunderbolt 3 controller, you're going to have better 1% lows. But I didn't think the difference would be that big. So let's go to another game. Let's go to GTA 5, same deal, 1440p, high, RTX 3070, and here you can see the Razer is faster. That's nearly a 20 frames per second, you know, nearly 20%, or whatever, 18% faster with the Razer. Now, this is because it's got a better CPU. It's, its CPU clocks the 4 gigahertz. It's got more cores. This is what I was expecting to see because it has the more powerful CPU. And given that both Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4, same sort of bandwidth, I think when you have games that are CPU sensitive, sensitive to CPU frequency, or needing more than four cores, when you use an eGPU, Thunderbolt 3, or a, you know, a gaming laptop's gonna be better. You know, Thunderbolt 4, XPS 13, 2 and 1, or any Ultrabook with four cores, 10th, 11th generation, they will be a little bit slower, just because of this. But again, the 1% lows still go to the Thunderbolt 4 even though it's 80 versus 83, the difference between the you know average and lows is a bigger difference with the Razer. Now with Witcher, you can see again, XPS 13, 2 and 1, Thunderbolt 4, Wolf. It's faster. So yeah, a bit of scratch me head. The 1% lows are better as well. You know, you can see the differences between the bars there. I just think Thunderbolt 4 being built into the CPU, less latency, faster RAM, much faster RAM. We're talking, you know, 4,200 megahertz RAM versus 3,000 megahertz RAM. All that adds up to faster, better 1% lows. I'm pretty shocked because I thought that, you know, the beefier CPU in the Razer would really make much more of a difference in gaming, but clearly the bottleneck is that connection and the latency and you know the speed of the memory etc so this is interesting i just thought i'll quickly chuck up some things here i'm going to do some more testing on this so stay tuned for that so anyway i want to get into reviewing this razor advance which is awesome they nailed this thing this razor advance it is an amazing laptop it really is one of the best in the segment now like there's nothing wrong with this razor you know maybe the battery life could be better compared to some other laptops and the xps 13 2 and 1 wow that thing is amazing and i can't wait for apple silicon too so Anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Oh, by the way, Apple, yes, they will support Thunderbolt. Obviously won't be built in a CPU. I don't think Apple Silicon are doing that. They'll still need the discrete controllers. So maybe they don't have Thunderbolt 4. I'm not sure what's going to go on there. Maybe they'll stick with Thunderbolt 3. Apple do their own thing. But yeah, Apple will support Thunderbolt. So that's good. So anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.